Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program. We take a look at papers, we call it off the press. With the help of our guest, who happens to be for today, Bolaho Olojade, public affairs analyst. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I hope you're keeping safe. I'm trying to do that. Okay, we'll start things off this morning with the business day. Let's see what's happening in the business world. Um, the big one here is Nigerian employers in grilling battle to keep staff. That's something everybody's thinking about. Um, it has a rider as COVID-19 pressure mounts. Uh, there is a picture of uh, the president receiving the former chief of army staff in his office. Uh, that's the picture on your screen. Other headlines captured there. Uh, federal government asked businesses, schools, others to adopt new strategies ahead of reopening as Lagos releases additional guidelines. Also there, we have inside the paper details of this story. Terms Nigeria must meet to access $1.5 billion World Bank credit and NLNG trained seven project attract $3 billion financing from 31 lenders. Uh, that's some of the headlines on the front page of Business Day. At the top of it, you have the market monitor, as usual. Uh, so, Balaho, let's uh, start things up with your take on the big one. The big staff. Uh, the Nigerian employers uh, battling to keep staff this period. Yes. Um, it's a very unfortunate situation. And as you might know, not Nigerian. Uh, the the it's but it's now a matter of stimulus. We can provide to the uh, the employer to be able to ensure that we can limit the effects of what is going on. Uh, as it is today, even in my office, uh, yesterday we had to do, uh, um, uh, we had to give a, a letter to a couple of, uh, we have to give letters to a couple of people um, along the same line. So it is, it is for real and we must be able to do something about it. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, the new directives being given for the reopening of businesses in Lagos. Uh, do you think really we should be reopening, uh, especially with the increasing numbers? Just last night, we had over 200 confirmed cases. It's, um, it's, it's a pretty tough situation for the decision makers. Uh, for you and I, it's slightly uh, different. But the decision makers feeling the heat on the economic side of things, at the same time, they need to balance the health of the people. Uh, it's a very challenging, challenging situation for them. And um, the need for us to have a plan is very important. If you flash back to two weeks ago, about almost three weeks ago now, when we had the first relaxation, the very first day of work, which was 4th of May, it was an embarrassment. When you get to the banks, you see the crowd. At the BRT uh, bus stops, there, was a ma there were massive crowds. And it, it was a show of the fact that there were no planning. So this time around, the government is trying to avoid a situation like that. If you, if you go to the banks today, things are a lot more orderly than they were on May 4 or May 5. That's because over time, we have now put on certain measures to be able to ensure social distancing uh, uh, and the hand hygiene and all the other things that are meant to be in place. This is the same mistake that the government is trying to avoid this time around. You don't want a situation in which you open up the mall in the phase two and the people, the new businesses we are opening up are not prepared for uh, uh, social distancing and, and, and other things that will help us um, prevent the spread of the virus. All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. Uh, the big one is on how churches, mosques, schools, 
Should plan reopening by government still on guidelines? We also have the PDP reps knock government over secrecy on Chinese doctors. That issue doesn't seem to be going away, is it? It's not nothing, not anytime soon. What, what, what's your reaction to the controversy being generated by it? We, we do understand there are stories of the House, the National Assembly, grilling the Minister of Health um, on his statement that they were not invitees of the government. Yeah, when, when, when you force the minister, minister of Health to a corner, he had to tell you the reality. The truth is that the Chinese doctors were not, were not invited by the Minister of Health. The, the CCE, they are CCE, CCE people. And, and that company is one of the biggest contractors of the federal government of Nigeria. But when you are bringing people in that category, around this time, the Ministry of Health automatically becomes like the clearing house for them. So you bring them, the ministry superintend how they will get into the country, the quarantine process, and all of that. But after the quarantine process, and they move into CCECC, it seems as if we totally forgot all about them. It is unfortunate that the Ministry of Health cannot account for them, despite the fact that they might have not, they are not, they were not the one that invited them. Because we have a virus pandemic in this country, they have a responsibility to ensure that at any point in time, they know exactly what is going on with them. So whether it's meant to provide them that report or that feedback on a regular basis should have been identified and they should have a report. So it becomes embarrassing when the Minister of Health says, oh, we don't know where they are, we, we can't account for what, them. What, it's, it's what about the one about uh, the them leaving the country, having done what they were, they've come to do? Uh, the, the, the company that is accepting responsibility is saying that um, they're still in the country because there are no available flights to leave. Uh, and some people are saying that there were no available flights when they came in. So why is that a reason for them not to leave? You can see that that was an embarrassing excuse at the same time. You, you don't tell people those kind of excuses. It, it doesn't, um, it, it can easily smell that there's nothing, something not right about those kind of excuses. When they needed to come here, there was already ban on international flight, and we arranged it to make it happen. If they need to go back, it is obvious that it can also be arranged. So it is not a good reason to say, there are no flights. No, that's that's not acceptable. We have to get more transparent with the way we deal with matters. Maybe we dropped the balls. We, we didn't follow up what is going on with these guys. Then we can pick it up from where we dropped it and be able to provide information that makes sense to the to the public about this uh, this Chinese uh, visitors. All right, uh, let's take a look at this one. Uh, it says, Senate asks FG to suspend electricity tariff. That's also on the uh, Guardian newspaper this morning. A couple of writers to read uh, that seems interesting. Once past sector privatization reversed. Uh, we also have six expansion of a move against bandits, others. Uh, those are other issues. But let's take the one that is the screamer. Senate asked FG to suspend electricity tariff inc electricity uh, tariff increase. Uh, that's it on your screen. And uh, interesting breakdown of cases in the country, also on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Uh, Gwalaho, before I come to you, let's take a look at the top of the paper. If we can do the flip now. There you have it. Uh, reps canvas speedy production of local vaccines, probe research on COVID-19. al Majuri have no business in Southeast, says Magban. 19 more workers test positive for COVID-19 in Ibado Company. Uh, that's um, something also for you on page seven of the paper. Uh, your thought on the electricity tariff? I thought we even got past it before. Um, this had come up much earlier in the year. And the concession then, I mean, the consensus then was that it should be postponed. And it was indeed postponed. I think the initial scheduled takeoff time was. Okay, we seem to have lost uh, Gwalaha briefly. Probably a call came in. Uh, let's go uh, quickly to the punch. Okay, uh, Gwalaha, I understand you're back with us. I'm here. Okay, great. Go ahead. 
Okay, so what, what we need to Somebody really wants to talk to Balaho this morning, like we do. Um, Balaho, are you still here? Okay, that call had to come in. But let's see. We'll reconnect with him briefly again, uh, rather. Let's see um, what the punch is saying this morning. Uh, the punch has the big ones. Lagos, Kanu, Bonu account for 52 um, cases. That's... Um, um, I beg your pardon, that's the wrong headline. We have many top Nigerians dying due to COVID-19 uh, home care. Uh, that's the federal government speaking. It's right on your screen now. Uh, pardon for the error. Uh, at the top of the paper, we have Kofu. Against Buhari's directive, IG bars, journalists, doctors, others. Please, directive can't supersede president's order, says NMA. 15 medical workers, pressmen, others arrested in Lagos. There seemed to be an update on that issue um, at, as of this morning. Uh, Senate uh, demands immediate reversal of power privatization. Uh, Bolaho, are you back with us? I'm here. Okay, good. Let's uh, get your thoughts uh, fully on the uh, electricity tariff issue. We need to postpone it as, a st as part of the stimulus to this economy. It is absolutely not the right time to increase tariffs. We're talking of a time when people are losing jobs, when salaries are being cut. It's inappropriate right now. So we need to postpone it. And the question that comes to mind is, so who pays uh, for that? Because don't forget that the electricity companies are partially uh, a privatized company. I mean, significantly privatized company. So, and that is where the government comes so it is the duty of the government to arrange whatever stimulus to guarantee the fact that the price increase will not happen. It could be in terms of certain compensation to the, uh, 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 this, the uh, electricity uh, companies to ensure that they can hang on and not increase the tariff at this time. Okay, let's move now to the Punch newspaper. Um, just before you came back on, I read out that many top Nigerians dying due to COVID-19 home care. That's the federal government speaking. Uh, says, don't use drugs without doctor's prescription. Cancels Minister of Health. We also have Nigeria didn't pay for Madagascar's coronavirus drug. There's been some issues about the amounts that uh, the federal government allegedly paid for it to be imported into the country. And reps tackle health minister over explanation on Chinese doctor. We've taken a little bite of that one. But let's uh, get to Balaho's take on uh, uh, top Nigerians, elite for that matter, well-educated people uh, seem to be dying more from COVID-19 than others. Um, the minister is worried about this. Are you worried as well? I am very worried about what is going on with COVID and the, and the elites. Um, they are supposed to know more. It's a different story. Um, if people are the lower rung of the ladder, are the ones saying, oh, I don't believe in COVID, I, you know, and they are doing all this self-medication and home treatment and stuff. But as the elite, it is expected that they know better about how dangerous this uh, disease is and are able to plug into the system for proper, proper uh, 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 medical attention. At the same time, I know there are certain complexity. You have uh, situations in which um, some people think that the isolation uh, uh, facilities provided are not good enough for them. I don't know how far that is true. There are also situations of certain isolation centers in certain part of Nigeria are almost always filled to the brink. In fact, before they can come and pick you in your house, they have to wait for some patient to be discharged. These are realities. So someone has tested positive and he had to wait for four or five or six days before there can be a space for him to be picked up and put in an isolation center. We have to address all this matter. There are also issues of, let, 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 let me tell you what happened to a friend of mine. He, he had COVID in the UK, he, he and his wife. And at the hospital, they were advised not to get admitted. And they were given certain drugs and to, to uh, apply. Today they are negative. I'm not, I'm not advocating that. But I'm saying that 
we need to reassess periodically our the, the, the capacities of our facilities and then take necessary steps to ensure that other levels of care can care for COVID. So I'm delighted that Lagos State Government, for example, is considering using PHCs for non-symptomatic patients, for example. It's something to think about. Well, uh -huh. There's if there a concern I must bring to your attention. There, what there, do we do? There is a concern I must bring to your attention. Um, when um, our Ministry of Health and uh, the Minister talk about uh, some of these guidelines, and then you hear a world leader like the US President Donald Trump flouting directives, going directly against uh, instructions of the FDA on the use of chloroquine, and then you have a scenario where people look up to this kind of personality for direction. If you um, take that to what we have in Nigeria, you, you remember the first time that he said that uh, chloroquine was a cure, there was a massive increase um, in the purchase here in Nigeria. So what worries you about this development when you relate it to what uh, the PTF and the Minister of Health is trying to do? And for everybody in position of leadership, we have to be very careful about our utterances. And that is where I have some problems with the way um, uh, Trump runs his own affair, but that is America. Let's come back home to Nigeria. In Nigeria here, my concern is that the, the transparency we need, uh, we're not yet at that level. The people at the front end are facing certain challenges. We need to be able to relate to those challenges and propound solutions rather than deny their existence. Even in Nigeria here, I, I mean, this is a report from some people in the isolation center. They're saying, look, the drugs are the same. They are applied to us at a certain time during the day. And then after 14 days, they know that you'll be well and you are, you are, you are caught free. They do the test on you and they set you free. That's so another, we need to start getting more practical. Issue. Well, I, I keep interrupting you, but that's another issue. The ministry is advising people not to be disclosing what they are taking at the isolation center to discourage people from doing self-medication. But this information is out there. So how, how, I mean, how can the ministry manage this? We're talking about communication. And then the ministry and the PTF is working to give us information information that they think we need but others that are not needed are out there it's very difficult to manage i, I know a patient who who already said that he, he has sent the drugs to to his wife because he's scared that because he was he tested positive his wife might also come down with it with the virus so he already has an idea of what the drugs are, and he has made it available to, 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 to his wife. So those things are going on. And rather than deny them, we need to find a frontal approach of deciding what do we do? Because these are the realities on the ground. So what, what are some of the suggestions, uh, if you were to make uh, suggestions to the PTF, because that's the uh, group we know that's uh, in charge of managing the COVID-19 containment? I think what, what I will be advising them to do is um, to get certain feedback on the floor, on the ground feedback from some of the isolation centers. Uh, and I will advise they come to a place like Lagos, where there, is, um, there are more patients and get on the floor assessment. That on the floor assessment will help them. You see, sitting in Abuja in offices and addressing media without knowing exactly what is going on on the, on, on the shop floor creates a gap. It means they are relying on words of mouth at certain levels from mouth to mouth. That is not going to help us at this level that we are. We need to get to the shop floor to know exactly what is going on and be able to propound solutions at, the, at this level. It's not the, exactly the same way we started that we are right now. Things have changed dramatically. All right, let's quickly take a, uh, a look at the nation newspaper in the little time left. NAFDAQ begins testing of uh, four virus remedy drugs. 
Uh, three riders to that story. No use spending money on Madagascar cure drug. Chinese claim new drug can stop pandemic without a vaccine. Uh, minister self-treatment cuss of many COVID-19 deaths. Okay, let me take that again. Didn't sound right. Minister self-treatment cause of many COVID-19 deaths. At the top of the paper, we have price of bread to go up by 60%. Baker's lament high cost. INEC no going back on Edo Ondo polls is slated for September 19 and October 10. Uh, COVID-19 cases in Ibadan firm. Now 49, we're taking measures, I guess that's uh, from the state government. Inside the paper, we have 23 national lawmakers negative. Loot delivers four twins. Balaho, your quick thoughts on any of these uh, issues I just raised? Uh, what's, what's the screamer? What's, what's the boldest one there? NABDAG begins uh, testing of four virus remedy drugs. Uh, well, it's better late than never. I, I, I will have thought that by now, uh, the clinical trials on, on some of the options that we, we have will have started way back, including things like the, the COVID organics. COVID organics did not go through uh, the, the, the expected level of standard protocols to declare it a curative drug. How many clinical trials did it go through? If we had taking some of this thing on much earlier and conducted, say, trials, 500 patients, for example. But by now, we'll be arriving at certain jobs. It's never too late. I'm glad we're doing this. Because waiting forever for the solution that is coming from the West may not be the best option. All right, I guess that's where we will wrap things up right now. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on the program. Thanks for having me. Have a lovely day. And that's a wrap for the paper's review this morning. I hope you got a thing or two from Bulaho's contribution. We're back again tomorrow morning with all the latest headlines uh, from the newspapers. Until then, please be safe. My name is Felicity Ezewike, and I will see you soon.